about it. <laughs> All right. Well, you're, you're so the coolest. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we're talking about a topic that people tend to avoid and not want to talk about, and you did just skip their taxes. I'm sure you weren't thrilled to talk about this tonight, so we appreciate your time. <laughs> so um, we'll keep it short and sweet because we have a lot to cover in a little bit of time. So there's goodies and handouts on the table, the PowerPoints um, on, on the left and in the middle on the other side, and then we've got some interactive group sessions towards the end. Yes. Um, quick background on Alan. We could just do a whole presentation on your, your amazing, legendary history in accounting, but um, we'll keep it brief. He has his bachelor's in accounting, and he loved it so much, he went for his master's at Brigham Young University. He started and led several successful companies before he landed at GDM. They do everything money, estate planning, taxes, accounting, um, consulting, you name it, he does it. So um, he really truly is a legend in this field. Um, and cool fun fact about him is he was the youngest person in Seattle to apply and obtain a business license at the age of 11 and, and his brother was 12 yeah and that was only, that was only like 10 years ago but it's still pretty cool yeah. 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 so Alex please take it away thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. here's your little I can, I can just use, I can yeah. just use my down arrow too you could Maybe you no. could. Um, if you... I get delay. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, well, could you go down to your office and check? Just no. run that <laughs> <laughs> So we'll. Do you have the right here? It was. It was working. Do I want to try? Thank you. It's not. Is it just the screen? Yeah. 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 It's probably just slow. I can go. I can even. I can even go here. And let's click on the second one. Um, go back here to start slideshow. Click that. Yeah. You want to see it down on the bottom that one. Now use your clicker. There you go. There we go. You did it. Perfect. Let's see. Carrie, yes. I've got Dawn. Oh, should I just leave her right? Where just she leave is? her right yeah, where she is. She's happy see. right where she's at. <laughs> Correct. Dawn, it's great there to there. have you. Okay, now I can use the clicker. You can, this is your gift. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. I think I've met everybody. Let's see if I can see if I can remember everybody's name besides Brittany, yeah, Patrick, Kurt, E.B., who doesn't want the full name, but <laughs> the acronym. This is Carol, if I remember, right? It is Carol. Carol. It is over here, Carrie and is it Kathy? And on the and on it's Don. It's Don. And what is what's my name? Alan. Ah, you got it. Okay. We can all go home now because we <laughs> identified the key participants. Um, We've got the important people. That's all of us. So what was I? What was I doing at the age of eleven? I grew yeah. up here in Seattle, just a little bit northwest of the Space Needle, little uh, community called Magnolia, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I went to school. Graduated from Queen Anne High School when it was a high school. But at age 11, after we'd exhausted all of our market for selling blackberries and uh, that we are plentiful in the Northwest, so we, could, we picked and sold them on the side of the street. And we didn't like the collecting. In the old days, you deliver newspapers and you had to go around collecting. And sometimes, sometimes people didn't want to pay. And, and you only got paid as a carrier if the customer paid. So they, they depended on 10, 11, and 12 year olds to do accounts receivable. And, and so we said, well, let's come up with a better plan. So we, we noticed in our, in our kind of, as we were driving around with our parents, that there were, that there were uh, addresses, actual house numbers that were painted on the curb. <laughs> and if you've been around neighborhoods where there are curbs, if you live in a rural area, there are no curbs, but in Seattle and Magnolia, there were curbs. And so we started a business putting, applying white paint about the size of a license plate on the top side of your curb and on the side that would face the street that a car could see coming, coming down the road. <laughs> and so for a dollar a side, we'd paint it white. And then with, the, with black, we'd stencil your, your home house number. So that was you. <laughs> <laughs> that was your, at 11 
Nice. Oh, good. So, so we uh, we applied. Our my father was in insurance and worked out here in downtown Seattle. And he said, "Well, if you're going to go into business like that, rather than just selling uh, berries on the side of the road, you better get a business license." So he marched us down to the down to uh, Seattle, to the and to and we walked in and with his help and. They looked at us over the counter. They had to look down a little bit because we were we, little. we were little, and uh, and they, with my father advocating for us, we we got a business license. And we use this to our business advantage because if we some competitors begin to spring up, and uh, so what we can do with competitors is we carry around our business license, <laughs> and and we would say, well, uh, are, are you licensed? <laughs> So we are, you're not. <laughs> so we, we are. So this is a, a licensed neighborhood. And the your homeowners expect us to be licensed. Now, whether or not they did or not, I don't know. Anyway. You can barely drink milk, but <laughs> <laughs> that's that was our that was our business. We made a killing and we spent it all. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that was my one of our first real entrepreneurial efforts, and I think I mentioned to Eb that I've been employed uh, a total of eighteen months by somebody else in my in my life. Otherwise, I've been uh, doing my own thing in a variety of different different enterprises besides accounting. I've owned a, um, an aerospace spare parts company that I that I bought and started a manufacturing company selling making little cargo balls that go on the cargo floor of the 747 and selling those to third country uh, airlines and had a great time. And now, but I'm back now doing what I love and that's helping people with numbers. We all love numbers. So I'm grateful you're here. Some of you are experts in some of the topic that I'm going to kind of walk you through and others are not. And so we're going to have, have fun and, and kind of teach each other. Okay. So the very first question, I, let's see if I can get my clicker to work here. Look at that. Okay, now for those of you who are, just think this through. So we're gonna start with a test. Here's the test. Who owns your home? The bank. There, there, there is a very, there's a very honest soul. Not me. Okay, so, but who else owns your home? I don't have it. Okay. All right. So this is the this is the start actually of a of a divine principle. Uh, your home is owned by you and usually the bank. Now some of you might own your home totally. You don't have no you have no mortgage, like that guy that who bought the eight million dollar no. $18 million oh, yeah. home, he probably paid cash. <laughs> they write checks. No, they don't have like, no. Yeah. yeah. So, so as you know, when you buy a home and you typically you have a mortgage on your closing statement, you have the price and you have how much the bank is contributing and then you do the rest. So we start right off with uh, understanding the accounting equation. Your home is owned by two parties, yourselves who are on title and the bank who has a lien. So they're, they're sort of a phantom title holder, if you will. You're not gonna sell that property without paying them off. So you own the home in, in, in partnership. The nice thing about owning a home, typically, if you're not 2008 and 2009, is it rises in value. When it rises in value, you benefit, the bank does not. But when it declines in value, as it did in eight and nine, then that's where a lot of banks and a lot of homeowners got in trouble because the value had dipped below the loan. And so you saw just a crescendo of, of poor, sad folks who, uh, who either couldn't sell, they were underwater, and so they had to stay in the home maybe that they'd grown out of but they couldn't afford to sell it. The value was less. Well, what I want you to just really hone in on is that the asset is always equal to some other, either usually a bank or equity. And we can, we can apply that. We can apply that to business. So Judy, since you run, <laughs> since you run the 520 project, 
And we're all, we all pay tribute to you driving over that 520 bridge. Now, just this is the accounting equation. Can you read that loud and clear, especially for uh, those who are not with us in person? Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So this is what happened in your home. You bought it and you bought it in concert with a partner. And in the same way, your business operates in the very same way. All, every asset that you have in your business is owned by your creditors and by whoever the owner is of the company. And everything that happens in accounting fluctuates in this equation. So let's look at it from a business point of view. And the, the, the equal sign is exactly that. This equation must always be in balance. And that's the only reason that accountants don't die. We just lose our balance. <laughs> so, so we this but this equation must always work so let's look at a let's look at applying this equation then to this simple little example i'll give you give you a minute to study this study this out on the one hand we've got assets of uh, uh patrick can you just read down the left side sure cash of three hundred thousand accounts receivable of five hundred thousand uh furniture and equipment of 150 thousand security cost of fifty thousand to a total of uh, what? Thank you very much. Okay, Carol, your turn. What's on the right side? Now you got to pay attention. You're eating, but I'm counting on you to pay attention because I'm going to call on you. Counts payable, 100,000. Line of credit, 300,000. That's 400,000 total. Okay, so Owners stop equity, right there. Stock. Stop right there. So, thank, so Patrick says that there's a million dollars of assets. Carol says that there's 400,000 of liabilities. So Carrie, how much equity does this company have? Well, at the moment, it's about 600,000. 600,000, ooh, now that's a, that's a, that's ooh. a good thought. When you say at the moment, what do you mean? This is good, this is good. It fluctuates quite a bit and I wasn't sure what the stock there's, there might be other liabilities out there, but yeah, the payables and receivables and cash, all that stuff moves around quite a bit. So this is this is a, a excellent point that Carrie makes. This is a snapshot. On one day, and it was two days ago, this company had this profile. About the ne the very next business day, it had already changed. So a balance sheet, we're looking at a balance sheet where, the, where this equation reigns supreme. Assets <laughs> equals liabilities plus owner's equity. That balance must always be in, in force, even though it's changing every day, every time there's a transaction. If we take a picture of the very same business two days later, it's gonna look a little different. And why? what's, what's the difference if we go from the end of April, which, just a month or a month that just ended and the end of May and we look at two balance sheets and they've changed. What makes the difference? What, what's happening in between that, that we also need to measure? What's, what's happening? We, we bought stuff. We did things. We issued invoices. We paid bills. We loaned money. some money. We received some money. We, something happened and the transactional accounting sequence that altered our balance sheet. And we call that the income statement. And or, and or even maybe a little more detail, we call it a statement of cash flow, but let's leave it at the income statement. So if we think of a balance sheet, it's a snapshot. We used to use a Polaroid, we, now we use our phones. You take a picture, <laughs> take a picture, that's the balance sheet. Then we go, we go to another balance sheet, that's a picture. And in between is the income statement, which is a is a highlight reel. Like, like what you stream on your television. You're watching a 30 or 60 minute show. My wife's favorite is Dick Van Dyke. And I love Lucy. And uh, those, I think those two, yeah, that's, that's her, those are her favorite. 
We also like Monk. Anybody Monk? seen Monk? Oh, Monk, Monk, Monk could be a, yeah. he could be a CPA. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No? Yeah. By the way, what does CPA stand for? Certified public accountant. I'm sure you've got a different one for it. Cleaning, pressing, and alteration. <laughs> okay, but you're right. Maybe. I knew it would be. So, so if you think of the income statement then as everything that happens between two balance sheet dates. So we're, we're, we, we start over 520 with the balance sheet. We go all, all the way across 520 with the income statement. And as we actually look over there at Bill Gates' property, that's a balance sheet. Everything in between that you're working on is the income statement. So if you that if you have that in mind, it helps you understand. And we'll look at some actual an actual example here when we do a little group exercise in a minute. Okay. Now, <clears throat> does anybody want to explore just briefly <laughs> what the heck is this? Now, let's see. I have some accounting experts. I have, um, Kathy, you confessed that you, you were a bookkeeper. You may not confess this at every dinner party you go to, but, I, but you've confessed it to me. So what is, what is double entry accounting? What do we mean? I wish I could explain that, that I learned back in college. Um, but a, a, a credit is when you get income and a debit is when it goes out, is that it? When money goes out? Sure. <laughs> I, I, I can't ever no, remember. no, no, no. <laughs> money in, money out. It simply, it simply means that every time, every time we have a transaction in, on, in our books, in our company, it affects at least two, if not more than two, accounts. Or we would call them code hooks or categories or or assets or liabilities or everything that happens in a company. Um, and we attribute yeah, in your in your coloring book. Have you seen these amazing coloring books? Yeah. Now you want to amaze your children and grandchildren. You want to inspire them <laughs> to greatness. This is it. This is it. Is it? Is it? It really is. <laughs> This so, is how Alan's I do not see a single unicorn in that color book. <laughs> that means you have, that means you have daughters, you have daughters, and they love unicorns, and no, there's no, yeah. no. That's gonna come out in the revised coloring book. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Unicorns. Yeah. So, so do you have a fun fact about this coloring book, Alan? Oh yeah. Wait. Let's see. Okay, coloring book. Now you gotta have your coloring book. Here we go. Here we go, look on page. And look on that page. Here's here's your here's your question from the coloring book, you guys. Which which one of these former accountants now hard rockers <laughs> did I see live in the in what's now called the Climb of Pleasure Arena? You see Mick Jagger on the left, uh -huh. Robert Plant on the right. Plant. Robert Plant. I got a 50-50 chance. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I got a 50-50 chance. Oh, too funny. I went my with my buddies to see uh, to see Led Zeppelin in the oh, yeah. fall, <clears throat> fall of 1970. We were all sitting in the upper level and we didn't want to pay a whole lot for the tickets, which were probably <laughs> about 15 bucks then. And uh, as the concert wore on, and you know, Led Zeppelin was almost our number one band. Mm -hmm. As we begin to uh, smell something, wow. now I will confess I went to BYU, so I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm a, uh, a Mormon boy. So here we are sitting on the upper level of the Coliseum, and we're all feeling, wow, what, <laughs> what is that? Well, well it yeah. was yeah. marijuana yeah. that was wafting up. And, and it was uh, knocking us, us uh, anyway, we all, we all got headaches and we, so, what a, what a, what a memory. Okay. Um, so double entry counting, and this was actually postulated by, by an Italian guy named Luca Pacchioli, and he is famous. We pay tribute to him every day in the accounting industry because he, He's the one that said, 
that every time there's a cause, there's an effect. We know that from other sciences, but in accounting, it simply means if we've got cash, cash came in, where did it come from? Came from someplace else. We had a sale, what does that impact? Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look. We have used some fancy words like debit and credit, which indicates which way some of these accounts travel in their transactional life, but that's more confusing and, uh, and you don't, we don't want to go into that mystery uh, tonight. <laughs> so let's, let's walk through this example. I'll give you a minute to study this on the screen. There's a yeah. few principles that we want to, want to talk about. So your company sells cool space vehicles. This is your company now. You've left the safe world of design administration. <laughs> and you've wandered off to start your own space vehicle company. And you've acquired some years ago the Millennial Falcon. All right. And you've talked it to many, it's kind of dilapidated, it's been beat up, as you've seen in the film. But finally, finally, one of your top sales guys sells it. He sold it just a few months ago in December 2022. And, and we actually finally, we had to kind of get it fixed up. We delivered it. We delivered it a few months ago in February. And then it seems like the, the customer, Yoda Enterprises, had forgotten about us. And we had to beat them up. And finally, they paid us just last week. So as you look at this little simple set of facts, when would we recognize the sale? That depends. What is number? Are you a crew? Are you cash case or a crew? Mm -hmm. uh, who? That, was that Kurt or Kurt? Kurt? That was a really good follow-up question. Okay. <laughs> what is that? What difference does that make? Can you ask the question one more time? Uh, is it a cash case? Uh, books or accrual based. Books. What's the difference? Uh, one is based on when you actually receive the cash, so that would be in May. And one would be the accrual base, uh, and I hope I'm getting this right, and that's when you actually build a client. When? When you build a client. Mm -hmm. you mean when? when you build a like when you submit your invoice to the client, that's when it starts being an account receivable. In approval. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is a this is a very important. It's a simple but also somewhat of a complex um, understanding if you're not in the accounting in the accounting world. But this this is critical to the accuracy of a company's financial statements. And the, and Kurt asked the question: Is this company cash or accrual? Well, accrual simply means that we're recognizing a sale when the goods or services are delivered. Mm. Not when they're sold. Mm. That's a sales order. Uh, That's a sales order. An architecture. Now this is where companies have gotten into a lot of hot water who cooked their books because they recognized on in their financial statements, they recognized revenue based on sales orders. A sales order, it comes in the mail or over the phone or fax or who uses a fax anymore? Or an email. <laughs> and that's and that's merely an order that, that they want to buy the millennial salary. That's not a sale. We haven't delivered it yet. Under the accrual methodology, we have no sale until we've delivered the goods or the services. And you're very mindful of that in, in, in your businesses. And we'll talk a little bit more about your hours here in a little bit. So that's critical. Kurt's question is at the at the foundation of this. If we were a cash company, as many are, in fact, probably most of your enterprises um, use the cash method when you calculate your tax return. You're 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 always on accrual because you're a governmental accountant, and so it's very very controlled, and it's always always accrual. You're better off. Let me ask you this question. If we were the stockholders of this company and we were looking at the first quarter results and we were on the cash method. Okay, now think about this. We were on the first quarter. We're sitting in just like this. We're having a board meeting and we're talking about sales from the first quarter. 
and we're through March. But we're on the cash method. Do we have any do we have any sales in the first quarter? No, our our stockholders would kill us. What? No sales? Alan, you're out of here. You're no longer the CEO. We've had a whole three months, no sales. So that's the failure of the cash method is it doesn't recognize a sale until the money comes in. The accrual method, oh, by the way, you have to take home. To anybody in, thanks for Brittany, um, here's my favorite pen. It's an accrual world. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so you can see on the other hand, if we're sitting in the same board meeting, and EB asks, Hey, do we have any sales in the first quarter? And we're on a cool method, we all say, yeah, We sold the Falcon, <laughs> it's on the books. So you can see that the the decision of cruel versus uh, cash is a very important one. Most every company that's that's wise and wants to manage their business successfully will use the accrual method for their accounting. But they'll often, especially in the service businesses like you and me, will pay our taxes based on cash. Who wants to pay for the accounts receivable that the construction company owes you? And they're not paying for three or four months, so why do you pay taxes on that? So you'll pay your taxes usually on a cash method. Most design, architectural, engineering, accounting, law, we pay our taxes on a cash method because we got a lot of receivables hanging out there. But but you run your business, you run the business on an accrual method. Okay, everybody got that concept down? John, did you get that? Are you are you asleep? No, I gotcha. Oh, you're wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. You're multitasking. What are you watching besides me? I won't. Oh, uh, my bag of potato chips. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. All right. Here's another question. Here's another question for you. And equally as now that you've eaten, you're thinking even more clearly because you're not thinking about food anymore. You're thinking about accounting. So read over this set of facts. Read over this set of facts. After pouring over the year in financials, well, let's see. Let's have like uh, Carrie. Yeah. Can you read the read the facts. Sure. After, after pouring over the year in financials and complimenting the company on the two million dollar bottom line, the principal owner calls you into her office and asks. We only have 250000 in our bank account. What happened to all of our profits? <laughs> How do you respond? Have you been asked that before? Where's the money? Where's the money? So how do you, how do you respond? Patrick, what do you think? You're, you've got a little role in finance? Uh, a little bit, not that much. <laughs> you defer to someone else. Kurt. Kurt? <laughs> Two million is the assets in the equation. Assets equals liability and equity. And so, sure, the bottom line is two million, but there's only two hundred fifty in cash reserves or cash available. So what happened to the cash? We've got two million at the very bottom of our of our income statement. Says that we made. We could have sold 50 million in our sales, so 50 million of, of space vehicles. All of our all of our costs were 48. We made two million dollars on the bottom line. We've only got 250 in the bank. Oh, are there rest receivables? Oh, what do you mean? Like <laughs> we are owed that money, but it's not in the bank. Okay, there you go. There's part, there's one of the answers. Well, you can have a you can have a bottom line under under the accrual method, but you could have half your profit sitting over there in accounts receivable. Does that make sense? You you've got you've got the because in on the income statement we're showing revenue minus expenses. Well, when we sell that space vehicle, we're, what's the double entry? What's the double entry? When we sold this when we sold the uh, space vehicle. Let's go back one. When we sold the space vehicle or delivered it in February, 
what were the two accounts that were impacted? We talked about double entry counting. What were the two? Kathy, I haven't called on you yet. What's one of the accounts that is touched when we, in February, when we delivered that space to go thousand? Inventory. Okay, good. That's one of them. What's another one? Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. Why? Because you, let's see, you do invoicing. One of you does a whole lot of invoicing. So we hit accounts receivable. What's on the other side of accounts receivable? Revenue. Revenue. Okay. And on the other side of inventory, remember double entry accounting, it's got to hit, it's got to hit. If, if you're, as soon as you hit inventory, what else are you going to hit? Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Okay. Okay. Very good. Oh, yeah, we're in a master's class now. All right. So, uh, what is one of the th we see? Was it EB? You said accounts receivable. Uh, that part of the profit is sitting in the accounts receivable. Where, where else might it have gone? Perhaps some uh, dividends or owners draw. True, true, true. And that's not on the income statement, is it? That's on the balance sheet. But. Oh, well, what does, that, does, does, does that does that mean Joseph has joined us? No. Okay. Um, so yes, owners draw dividends. That takes cash, but isn't on the income statement. Where where else might it have gone? Inventory. Could have bought inventory. Could have bought something that touched the asset side of our of our company, like furnishings, equipment, a new computer to replace this one that Kara said doesn't work very well. A new Maserati. A, a, a new company car, a delivery vehicle. A Maserati. We could have also we could have also retired some debt. We could have paid down some debt, and that reduces a liability. That's not on the income statement either, except maybe the interest component. So there are lots of ways that we could respond. And if we actually ran a, a statement of cash flow, we could tell the, the owner or the board exactly where the money went. That's the third financial statement that is often overlooked in a small business. We know we've got the balance sheet. We know we've got income statement. But the statement of cash flow seeks to answer this. And we're not going to go too deep into that. We don't have, the, don't have the time. But you get the idea. We have many ways to spend money that do, does not impact our revenue minus expenses. And, more, and all of those reside on the balance sheet. Either we bought assets, we retired debt, we bought inventory, we paid the, the owner team, Dividends or owner distributions, etc. Now, any 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 questions? My wonderful financial board here. <laughs> All right. So let's. Uh, now we're going to have a little group exercise. I have one, two, three, four. Uh, um, Carol stepped out. So. So let's see. Let's see, you, let's see, Kathy, you're in, you've got, you do actual bookkeeping, so you stay there. I don't know. You know everything. And, and you're in finance as well. Several of you touch finance. So when I need one more over there, because uh -oh. Carol will come I'll back. Over there. You yeah. wanna, yeah. Okay. So each of you need um, need a set of financials. So we're going to do a little, we're going to do a little guide. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I got one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody have. Or you should have a five. <laughs> you should have a five-page uh, set of financials. I'll orient you. Then we're going to have, and, you, and as a team, you're going to kind of work on the questions that you see. Okay. We've got our tax bracket table. Oh, yeah, they'll hand out, they'll hand out action for Marilyn for you. <laughs> Secretly, you, you want to know about taxes, but we're not talking about taxes. Okay. Um, so this is an actual company. This is a design engineering company. Uh, 
Um, and they do a lot of business with architectural firms who hire them to build, to design or engineer fancy elements of what you want to build. So this this could be one of your one of your constituencies. I've tried to uh, redact everything I possibly can. <laughs> so, so you wouldn't know who it, who it is. But this is an actual company set of financials. And what you have is a look back at the end of 2022. That's on pages one and two. You can see the dates at the top. Pages one and two are 2022. Pages three and four are from just last month, April 30th. Page five is a comparison of the first four months of 2023, the income statement, with the first four months of last year, the income statement. So you've got four sheets of balance sheets from different periods, and you've got a set of, of uh, the income statement from two different periods, same January to April, this year versus last. And then I have for you these questions and, and uh, work on this is kind of a team project. These are the these are the questions to take the financials and we're going to do just a little bit of enlightenment for what these financials can tell us. And so I have to put on my I have to put on my hat because now instead of working <laughs> in the business. <laughs> We're going to work on the business. I think Don needs to see this. <laughs> start with an end. Start hey, with an end. Ron. <laughs> we're we're going to start. Uh, there we oh, go. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of working in the business, we're going to take a minute now and we're going to work on the business. I love okay. it. Part of, part of your role, even though you may not touch finance or it's not your full-time full role, the more that you understand what the finances or the financial condition of your company is telling you, the more contributing we can be to their success. Even understanding double entry accounting or just that just that concept can be can be helpful to get both. So as an office administrator, you see you see bills coming in, you see invoices going out. And the more you can understand and take a minute to try and understand about your own company's financials, the more you can be uh, helpful to the to its success. So take some take a few minutes and work through the, the 10 questions. You can divide them up, you can talk about them together, whatever you want to do. Oh, I might have a bite of now, Don, do you have uh, do you have the financials and the and the questions? Oh yeah, I got them. Okay. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, calling on you for number one. Okay. So prepare thyself. That's a big piece of shit.
for 2022 assets so this well, we were looking at the page five for that down i'm going down loss the chambers so that's kind of don part you want to talk about that for a minute okay yeah 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 sure come join us <laughs> i love a good brain trust thank you <laughs> I'm so starting to look at the new assets. I mean, question you said, I don't care how much job jobs make. Um, I just make sure there's money. Cash well. Oh, okay. The answer is probably. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because the non well, because the non assets, assets yeah. like they're equal, right? All right, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Also, yeah. Also, also, there, way to go, man. Well, yeah, that doesn't really work. Increase, which is fun because that's what you normally see. Yeah. Over a year from December through April, and you would increase the negotiation, but the actual amount of it did not change. So they did not buy any new. You're only going through April. Yeah. So I would say no. Yeah. So we would like to be having all the time. In December, it's like doing your whole accounting. It's like yeah. <laughs> it has like one hundred twenty-five thousand short-term debt. Monthly quarter, she wouldn't know how to pay off. Yeah, yeah. 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 How much money do you make? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
quite a bit. Enjoying learning a new language. <laughs> well, good for you. That yes, account, accounting is the language of business, actually. Yes. What is a? Let's see. Did I write down your your role, your office, you're the office manager? So you, you see accounting, though, don't you? Uh, no, not um, not historically. So this is kind of new for me. Do you have an in-house accountant, or is it all outside? Uh, we did, and uh, we just merged with another firm, and now um, it's a little bit of a different structure. So, um, so yeah, so that's not my history, but um, it's definitely will probably be part of my future. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The office managers, somehow, because they do such a good job, are always... Uh, Impressed into the service of accounting at some point. Yeah, it's amazing. No well, good for you. All right. Thank you. All right, let's let's get to number ten. We've already got this. Uh, the credit side of the room has jumped into number ten. So why don't you jump down to number ten, and we'll we'll. Uh, That's where we're at. Jump, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Compare the phone number. Why make sure they sure you guys are ready? 2023. went up modestly. Quarter 56. This top line. Revenue. Amazon. Yeah. Revenue down. And I couldn't change my glasses on. Five minutes, five minutes. Let's pick it up. <laughs> you got deadlines. <laughs> we have to be done, Alan's got chicken. Seven thirty. Nine o'clock. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. That chicken was very good. Yeah. I told her we gave it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, they've been here all the time. Yeah. Kathy, where's your office? Uh, about 10 yards from my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough commute. I know. Yeah. yeah. I, I go to the office once or twice a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 
Dropping the anvil at <laughs> seven thirty. She's a tough little girl. Yep. We've got other things to do. That's right. Let's get going. All right. All right, Don. I I prepped you. Can you answer number one? What method of accounting cash accrual is this company using, and how can you tell? I guessed that it was accrual. And what informed your brilliant guess? <laughs> Um, well, what I saw was um, an, an, an entry for a work in progress. And so I felt like if it was cash based, um, it would, and it would, that would be, um, or that would be like recognizing when um, goods would be delivered. So that's why I thought that. Okay. Well done, Don. What other, what other recognition could you quickly say would be identified as a Cruel based company. AR. AR. And on the liability side, AP. A AR and AP. So those are the, and, and in this case also, as Don pointed out, uh, work in progress. So those are elements of an accrual company. This was a cash based financial statement. You wouldn't see any AR. There isn't any AR in a cash based company, there's just cash. But the reality is you've, you've got receivables and you've got payables. Okay, let's move along. What was the net loss for 2022 and where did you find it? We didn't have an income statement for 2022. Where did you find it was a profit or loss? So I have a, have a vote from the debit side of the room. Yes, we think that the net loss at least for this time period in 2022, was at the bottom of the profit and loss statement, net loss, 567,000 K. Take another, <laughs> I, I now defer to the credit side of the room. <laughs> what was our loss for 2022 and where do you find it? 313,000. 313,000, where do you find it? It's uh, on the second page of the balance sheet under net income. Go down to the bottom, you guys look at page two. Down at the bottom is a, is a oh, bolded a account. Net income is a net loss. But it's a bolded, bolded account called retained earnings. What is retained earnings? This is a 
good concept for all of you to understand, whether you're reading your uh, financial statement of your company or of a company you're thinking about buying, or you're looking at, the, at a financial statement on the internet that is, belongs to Microsoft. It, a lot of these are public. So what is retained earnings? I see. Thank you. Um, you pull that up the <laughs> Carrie's safety blanket. That'll get you a, a D on the accounting exam. But not bad. I mean, it, that's what it is emotionally. Anyway. Yeah. What is what is retained earnings? Closing out the end of the year, getting from a loss to that account, and then basically you'll start from zero the next year. So retained earnings is the accumulation from day one of the company of all the profits and losses. So if you've got retained earnings, it means that you've had profits over the years. But what happens at the end of each year is exactly what you see on page two, that a profit or loss adds to or subtracts from your retained earnings. So retained earnings is again the sum total that was wonderful. Thank you for cooking that yourself. <laughs> Great that. job. Well, well, that's what that was. That was very good. Okay. So, so there was a net loss of 313,000. Do you see that? It says net income, but it's got a minus on page two, right there below in that bolded area called retained earnings. All right, good. Let's go to, let's go quickly then to the next question. Um, so net, the, what happens to retained earnings when we have a loss and Carrie, you kind of answered that yeah. retained earnings go down. All right. How about for the four months ended April 30, did they have a net income or an, a loss for the four months at an April 30? Kurt, what do you think? Yes, that again, <laughs> the question is number four. Did the company have a net income for the four months ended April 30? Yes. Okay, how much? 84,000. 84, okay. And what happens, what happens uh, on the inverse? We just discovered what happens when you have a loss. What happens to retained earnings when you have a um, when you have a profit? <laughs> he got a bigger blanket, right? <laughs> <Gary>? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Retained earnings goes up. Retained earnings goes up with a with profit. It goes down with a loss. Retained earnings is the accumulated profits and losses from the day one. The only other thing that affects retained earnings is if the owners take money out of that equity section. Um, Okay, let's uh, let's move along quickly here. Did the company buy any new assets in 2023? EB, I think I heard you discussing that over here on the debit side. Yeah, we decided no because when I when we compared our assets in December to the assets in April, it was the same amount, about 554,000 in value. You're brilliant. <laughs> You're hired. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good. That's how you can tell. You look at the comparison. When we, when I do, and I do a lot of analysis of, of uh, companies' financial statements, and I line up the balance sheets for several years right in a row, right in a column. In QuickBooks, that's very easy. Most other programs, it is as well. This is not QuickBooks, by the way. This is a a specialized accounting package for design, architecture, and engineering. Um, and anyway, that seeing what happens to the various accounts is, is illuminating. And that seeing that besides the, what you can see from the income statement side. So you looked at the, re, at the fixed assets, there was no increase. They didn't buy anything in the first four months, which is very surprising. Usually they're adding thousands this company is adding thousands every year because they're constantly retooling their, their laptops and doing what Carrie and Kurt say they're going to do with this one, and that is uh, uh, retire it in another one. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, and 
What happened to the debt on the on the credit side? <laughs> credit side. What happened to the debt? That, that's, that's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> those uh, blunt words, that's, that's exactly what happened. You paid debt down. So this is an example. Even though they made money on the bottom line um, in the first four months, they used part of that, part of those profits to pay down rather significantly some of their, some of their debt. Okay, hey, let's ask a, a poignant question for all of you in your own businesses. Do you have, do you have WIP? Do you have work in progress? It didn't exist. Yeah. Be on these sheets? No. Okay, what is, what is, what is WIP in an architectural firm? You're all, you're all yeah. part of design and architecture. What is WIP in an architectural firm? Unbuilt time. Unbuilt time. Unbuilt time. Unbuilt time. So you, you everybody, everybody working sometimes it's on an hourly basis, sometimes it's, it's on a project basis, whatever it is, you've got time and you're and you're accumulating time. Whip is nothing more than unbilled time. Can you pay can you pay your vendors with whip? <laughs> it's older, yeah. You cannot. This company thought they could. And take a look at the whip at the end of April. How much is the whip at the end of April? Not a lot. How much was their work in progress? Almost 200,000. Almost 200,000. What was it at the end of uh, December? 72. 72. They're doing a lot of favors. They're they're billing a lot and they haven't. Um, now, I, I, I cut these financials a few days ago. So... They go through a cycle of cleaning this stuff up, but this is where they got into trouble. The whip grew and grew and grew, and they weren't really examining it. And the whip inflated their balance sheet and their income statement. Because what happens to whip? Well, it goes, they go whip goes to the balance sheet as an asset, and it goes to the income statement as unbilled revenue. And you can't pay salaries with unbilled revenue and, and eh, they uh, they have gotten their act together and i can tell i mean i haven't been talked to them about it yet but i can tell they haven't reconciled their whip for the end of april it's way too high <laughs> way 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 too high so you either have to make the decision in your company you have to decide what is your policy either we're going to bill it or we're going to write it off something you're going to do something can't just hang on to this stuff. That un, unbilled time is either to inform you about the next project because you bid it too low, or something's going on. But you, you as an office, as as office experts, <laughs> you you need to you need to look at your whip. If somebody else isn't looking, you should be looking. And if you get nothing more out of this than that for tonight, then then it will be worth it because that's a you know, hey, where's the whip ledger? <laughs> but see, you know, because uh, you know, often in the design architectural engineering firm, it just kind of keeps building, just kind of keeps creeping up, creeping up. And anyway, okay, let's uh, let's go to the next question. Probably goes without saying, but what what assets of your company uh, do pay the bills? Cash and, and accounts receivable if they're current, they're going to come in and help pay the bill. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's dive into number 10. We're just going to kind of hammer these out really quick. I'm looking at my watch and we're having too much fun, but Carrie says I'm going to sit down at 7.30. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. As we compare the four months. So now you're just, just looking at page number five. So just put the others aside. Just open, make sure your packet is open for, to... Uh, Page five, Don. I'll, yeah. I'll ask you the first question: Did the did sales did revenue go up or down compared to the same period of last year? It rose. Do I have another? I'm so sorry. Uh, 2023, it went down. Went down. Okay. Yes, sir. Top line revenue went down, but what happened to the net operating income? 
Uh, can I ask you the same question, Don? Keep you on the spot. Yeah. So I went down to the bottom of the page, and it looks like uh, quite a difference there. Their um, their net loss. Um, they kind of recovered some of that in 2023. Yeah, look at the difference in the net operating income. Do you see that towards the bottom of page five? Net operating income increased by 600,000. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. See the delta between the two? One year ago, we were sitting on a half a million dollar loss. One year later, we're making money. So what happened? They laid off all their admins. Yeah, they... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's okay, raise, raise your hand, class. Raise your hand. This is this is this is good stuff. You guys are seeing this, you, you're doing exactly what I do when I'm analyzing a set of financials for a company. Now you're taking my role, pretty soon you'll take my job. So, so what. Give one 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 thought in this table. We kind of bounce back and forth. You can't repeat each other. So just pick one. What happened? What's what's one thing that they did that made the difference between that four month period of time, twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three? They reduced indirect labor from six hundred eight thousand in that period in twenty twenty two to four hundred forty thousand in that period. But also taxes and benefits to mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. Which would, would problem with that? So yeah. they reduce their number of people. Which would follow, wouldn't it, Patrick? You reduce your your labor force, your all those tag along <laughs> taxes and benefits also will also will drop. So they had to do some pretty serious layoffs. One year ago, they lost five hundred thousand dollars in four months. Well, you can't keep doing that. You can't pay your bills on whip. So we had we got to do something. So they actually had to start the year before. They actually made this big run up, hired lots of great people, but it was too much, too much. So they had to start doing some pretty aggressive layoffs. But something from the credit side of them, what else did they do? So they had a payroll reduction. And they cut off their marketing budget for a bit, um, and office expenses just in general. Is that a small office? Nope. No. Nope, they went remote. So there was a, so again, like, like many of you, most of their employees were working from home. Marketing went down substantially. What else did you catch? Uh, office, office expense. Anything else from the debit side? Anything else you can see that they, that they did? Services. What are services? 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 Quite a payment. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to see that. But was that be your quarterly payment? <laughs> very, very painful. I'm, I'm sorry you hadn't noticed that. <laughs> but that's indeed what happened. They're paying me much less. They really don't need me. They they hired. We we found a really great in-house accountant to control with them, and she was part of the run-up of that of the uh, uh, payroll expenses. And we decided oh, we can. They're awesome. We can do this. So I backed off, and and uh, and that was one of the one of their professional. They also had a lot of investment in, the, in their IT service guy. You think of all the remote, and you know, a lot of you are working remote, and who manages all of that? That takes that takes expertise, and and so they had to cut back on on some of uh, his and her time in that regard. They cut their and they cut their. Um, um, the biz dev person. Yeah. You know, that's going to hurt them later. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That's going to yeah, next year. You yeah. cut biz dev, yeah. and then you're cutting yourself off of a kind of a, a longer view. Yeah. 
Right? Oh. They cut the marketing person. And they really chop down on some of their consultants. Um, do you use consultants in in your environment? Engineering does, design does. You've got to go get somebody who's really good on HVAC or whatever that's got the technical expertise because they're brilliant in, in anyway. So they they went more in house to um, and if you and so that's that was, that was a lot of it was labor. Some of it was marketing. Certainly, professional services, office expenses, they were just spending less. So they their top line revenue was less, but their bottom line net income was six hundred thousand dollars better in four months, at comparatively four month period of time. So that's fiscal responsibility. That's a company that's watching its financials and taking steps to manage their business using accounting principles and good accounting because you got to have good accrual financial statements to really know what, what's happening to navigate your business in a, in a way that's both profitable and solvent and for time these guys we were worried about their solvency i hope um, you didn't let their accounting person go because their receivables are crazy high <laughs> they are they are a little too high you know who some of them are is the architectural firms yeah. is that some of you yeah, and the reason that they're that they that they're hanging out there is yeah. that the architectural yeah. people have to get paid, yeah. and then engineering yeah. design yeah. company gets paid. So it's sort of a trickle down. If you got a big builder around here, and he doesn't get his contract amount paid, then he doesn't pay his architectural fees, and then engineering doesn't get paid, and it's uh, but it, it's way too much. Yeah. And some of theirs are old. Well, they have to be. And I won't tell you their names because yeah. you know some of them. Yeah. Maybe some of them are you. I don't know, I don't know anybody from December, so shh. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, $100,000 days? I mean, they're feeling $500,000. Well, they've got, they've got some that are 90 plus, and those are the ones that make us anxious. And all of those are, all of those are, are frankly, artificial. And all of them you would know if I came here. Yeah. No. Okay, at 728, you got one. Sort of true story. <laughs> this older gentleman lived a long life, and uh, he was on his deathbed and called around him his most his most trusted advisors. One was his minister, his priest. In other words, his estate attorney who would carry on his assets after after he passed, and of course his accountant who'd been watching his books for decades. And he said, I've heard it said that you can't take it with you. I'm going to prove that different. And to each one, he handed $100,000 of cash in an envelope. $100,000 to you, $100,000 to you, and $100,000 to Patrick. <laughs> Several days later, he passed away. Everybody was gathered around, around and as the casket was lowered with honor, um, the, uh, as instructed by by the deceased, mm -hmm. the uh, priest threw in his envelope, followed by followed by the attorney, followed by the CPA. As they're walking back to the cars, the minister was the first to break, and his name was Patrick. <laughs> and he said, "I am the man of the cloth. I have broken my vow of integrity." The, the, the church wasn't doing so well. I I kept twenty thousand and I only threw an eight. And the other two just shook their heads in disgust. And, <laughs> and the attorney said, and then he broke. He said, Well, I'm also a man of the I you know, I I haven't taken money out of my firm in a long time. I've been paying my employees. I I I took fifty. I only threw in my in my envelope only fifty thousand. And the seat paid up that and said, What's wrong with you two? I threw in a check for the four months. <laughs> and uh, it's 730. <laughs> Thank you, Don, for being with us from, from afar. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was really great. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Is that it? You're going out on that?
That's it. <laughs> so okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Can you put off on your hat? Very good. Very good. Very good, Bob. Oh my gosh. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for joining us. It was my pleasure. Take care, you guys. Bye. All right. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to stop this recording. Yeah. All right. Stop the recording. Yeah, Alan, we're going to just keep.